The whole process of growing stuff out here is so different to what you see on the mainland. It's probably not like in the garden being a nice hole in soft dirt, is it? I'm Jim Buck. I run the revegetation program here at Lady Elliot Island. Lady Elliot was cleared for uh, mining of guano back in the 1800s, and what we're doing now is actually revegetating the island. A lot of work was done back in the 1970s, 1980s, but what we're doing now is just putting back natural vegetation, the species that should be here. This will give us much more uh, sustainability uh, of the vegetation um, and from an environmental perspective it allows the birds to nest in areas where we have areas available for them. Some of the exotic weeds that we've got here are actually excluding birds from nesting in certain areas which is not what we're chasing. We're, we're really looking for a, a full functioning ecosystem and build the resilience into the vegetation across the island. When these guys nest they build a nest with white pebbles. So whilst this area through here just looks like open rubble, as you walk through here, there's evidence of common noddies nesting quite frequently, like this. So that's a common noddy nest. The common noddies actually collect all these little stones and they build their nest. We see evidence of nesting on all the open parts of the coral rubble and yet we've now got this vine that's growing in here, uh, corky passion vine, and this is actually limiting now the area these birds have available to them. One person can't do this job, it's not possible. Uh, 10 people can't do this job. We will not deliver this program without the use of volunteers, without the use of uh, expert contractors, and certainly not without the support that we have from people like National Parks and Kabrumpa and the Foundation. I didn't expect to, for you to be that far back in this particular amount of time. So, um, no, you've done a great job. This week, we'll have a, a new group of volunteers that'll be here and um, they'll be here for about five days and we'll be doing a whole bunch of weeding, um, a lot of uh, planting um, and then just general clearing up type works in specific areas. Same. Are you doing any up there or what? No, no. Okay, I'll just come in, how far are we? So, yep. centre there, yep. back. So what we're doing is we're forming a hole from where the loaders dug a trench and then we're uh, building it about yay deep down um, and then we're building up the walls with some of this uh, fossilised guano and corals to make it a, a perfectly round hole. I think what's cool is that, OK, this is on land and this is revegetation, but ultimately, you know, building up this ecosystem also helps the reef. So it's a really nice connection from land to sea. As soon as three o'clock hits, it's back to back to the tents and the snorkels go on and out we go. So, pretty lucky. The program here has been going now under the funding through the Great Barrier Reef Foundation for about just under four years. And on average, we're putting in somewhere between two and 4,000 plants per year. And it really depends on the year and the types of areas that we're working on. In the nursery, we have around about 5,500 plants currently. Our stocking capacity is around about 7,500. Um, the irrigation systems we've got in here are very, very good. These bigger trees behind me here, these are all being grown from cuttings. Um, these ones in this row are all seedlings. Um, so the seeds have been brought in from other islands to give us better genetics, mixing genetics from different islands so that uh, we can uh, look after the genetic pool here rather than having it being rather shallow. And adding to that all the plants that we have in our greenhouse and our propagation rooms. But the mere fact that we can get that number of plants out into the real world uh, annually uh, is a really good thing. And we're talking about 
um, plants which are in all three um, areas. So we have tree layers, we have shrub layers, and we have ground layers. So we're not just about putting trees in because there are other layers that we need to work with. And this is all based around the Queensland Herbarium's regional ecosystem. So this area through here is a classic coastal zone. Um, originally, this was all khaki weed. Um, so this is all native grasses through here. This is all stalky grass. This is exactly what we're trying to develop. The process here is to start replacing some of these larger, older trees. Casarinas have around about a 40-year lifespan, and most of our casarinas here have been here about 50 years. As we walk up through the, off the beach here, we uh, get lots of wind coming off the water. And right on the very front edge, we always have these octopus bush. They provide an airfoil shape which actually lifts the wind. So particularly things like Personia, which don't like the, the strong winds, this actually lifts the wind over the tops of trees, mixes it with casarinas, and by the time it gets through to the Personia areas, um, we have a very good way of deflecting and diffusing the wind. So one of the things we find here at Lady Elliot is that um, there's a lot of nutrient in the ground. What that means is that the Pisonias and in fact all the trees that we have uh, grow extremely quickly. So from a cutting we can get a Pisonia ready for planting out in the field in around about six months. Uh, so that's around about five foot tall and we just grow that from a, a cutting around about 500 mils in length. different stages here where we've got these new ones which are only planted around about three and a half months ago right up to these guys at the back here that were planted back maybe about three years ago and as you can see the uh, the height on these trees is quite uh, extraordinary in three years so personias are very very fast growing um, and it gives you a, a great um, opportunity to um, get these big forests in very, very quickly. So the personas in front of us here, uh, they were planted in the year 2000. Um, they've now become quite a good mature tree. We're actually gonna drive through the walkway over here so that we can uh, get a, a feeling for how these um, personia forests look from the underside. Pisonia forests are always uh, very, very shaded. The um, temperatures in here are quite cool. As you can see through here, um, they shade out everything underneath them. So it's very Harry Potterish in amongst all these, this vegetation. So on average, we're planting one Pisonia on about a three metre spacing. So Pisonias on three metre spacings will give us a canopy closure in around about four years. So in areas like we are right at the moment, um, we don't worry about weeding. We don't need to worry about weeding. We know that in four years time, um, the weeds will all be just shaded out. So here's a classic example of how, as we plant our personias at uh, the required spacings, and we've developed this over time, as we progress, and around about three to four years, we start to get this situation where the weeds are no longer an issue. I think there's uh, great opportunities for people in many different walks of life to contribute to these types of areas. Um, I think it's just a matter of folk getting out and uh, just seeing what's there and what they could do. I mean, volunteering in its, in its purest form is about helping others and helping what we want to see happen.
definitely ties us back to you know saving the reef and um, we're going to go back with an even greater um, I think connection to the reef and um, want to do our best to really make a difference. I'd like to bring my daughter and show her the photos or some footage of what we've done here now and then come back with her when you know show her as she's growing up what change you can do. We actually saw this area that we're working on at the moment uh, planted last May and here we are in um, almost April the next year so nearly 12 months and we've seen those trees come up now we're going back in getting the jungle of weeds out of the way so wow you know we're just getting to see the fruits of our labour. This program is such a really classic example of what can be achieved by quite a few people over a relatively short period of time to get a, uh, a very classical outcome, uh, the restoration of an island in the Southern Great Barrier Reef.